Ever feel like you just kind of lost your mojo? Well, that's what we're talking about today on Self Love Sunday. So let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel, I provide free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get to it. We're gonna talk about how to find your mojo again, get your groove back, all that after narcissistic abuse. Because I know a lot of time, even during sometimes when you're working on getting out, you've, you've figured out what's happening. You figured out what's happening, you're working on getting out of there. You might just decide that you want to get your groove back. All right, so today it's all about getting the groove back. <laughs> getting involved in a toxic relationship, as you know, is something that more people deal with than you would think, right? And when you have the mental abuse coming, all the horrible stuff coming from your partner, it really has a tremendously negative effect on you. Would you agree? It can be tough for you to bounce back from the mental abuse that you had to endure and your self-esteem really suffers because of it. I find that the mental abuse that I was put through by a narcissist was usually an, an attack by my partner to make me feel worthless or insecure. Would you agree? Partners do it to gain control. We're talking about the toxic partners, obviously. They do it to boost their own ego. They want you to have low self-esteem so that you won't think for yourself. Getting out of a relationship like that is the very first step that you need to take in order to save your own sanity here. There are other things that you're gonna to need to do to bounce back from the mental abuse. It's really important that you stay active and that's something I'm working on getting back into because I kind of got a little lazy recently, but Fitbit, we're back. Get out and do things with your family and your friends because an abuser loves to alienate you from people. They wanna keep you secluded so they have plenty of influence over you, right? You wanna keep your mind focused on other things so that you don't isolate yourself at home. You aren't dependent on the negative person who's feeding your self-esteem issues. Call up your friends, read uplifting books, concentrate on a project like redecorating your house or your office. By the way, I'm redecorating my office. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got rid of the big leather couch and now I have a pretty pink chair. Uh, I've done a lot of changes already. My office manager, Melina, is coming over tomorrow to help me finish it up. So if you want a tour of my office when it's all finished, give me a like and a comment so that I know to give you that, all right? Okay, carrying on. <laughs> Do whatever it takes to keep you going is my point. If you have a job, continue to work and take note of the goals and achievements that you have there. If you don't have a job, you better look for one or decide to start your own business or whatever. Do something to not only help you financially, but also help you stay busy. Staying busy is really important. Working can get your mind off your problems. I know it always has worked for me and give you the necessary affirmation that you can do whatever you want, okay? Whatever you put your mind to and that you're not worthless. In fact, you're limitless. That's so much better. Avoid jumping into relationships until you're really fully healed emotionally. We've talked about this before. You're more likely to fall for other partners just like your ex if you don't give yourself time to heal and figure out what you really want. You don't wanna get in the same situation as you were and repeat the cycle of abuse. That's not healthy for you, is it? Mm -mm. So don't waste your time on thinking about your ex too much, whether it's negative or otherwise, or thinking about the narcissist, whether they were your ex or your whatever. Some people make the mistake of spending a lot of time with thoughts on how much they hate their former partners or the narcissist they separated from or the parent they separated from that they just wish they could get revenge. But listen, if you continue to let yourself feel angry and hate it like this, okay, first of all, we've, we've talked before about how it affects your health, right? But here's another thing. You know, it kind of makes your life suck if you're mad all the time, if you're angry all the time. So release the anger and focus on what's important to you, what you can control. We've talked about this a gazillion times. You know what it is, right? It's you and your own perception. It's time to move forward with your life, right? Don't be afraid to reach out for some professional help if you need to. A professional could help you work through your feelings, help you build your self-esteem back up. You know, 
I can help you with that. A therapist can help you with that. Even a really good support group like SPAN, which if you're interested, go to queenbeing.com slash SPAN. It's free. It's my group. And I have an amazing, amazing team of beautiful, strong admins who are really, really engaged. And of course, my, my office staff helps a little bit too. And I'm in there periodically, um, pretty often. <laughs> Don't let a toxic relationship break your spirit is my point. You deserve better than that. So how do you build confidence in yourself one day at a time? Many of us have goals and dreams that we envision for our lives, but without confidence, we're not gonna get anywhere, right? Building up your confidence again, or for the first time, depending on who that narcissist was to you and how long you were with them, is gonna give you the motivation that you need to get everything you want in your life. So here are some exercises you can try to work on your self-esteem every day, okay? Are you ready? Self-love Sunday. <laughs> All right, y'all know number one for me is always a journal, okay? A confidence-boosting journal should contain positive things for you. you did for that day. A lot of people get a lot of stuff done in 24 hours, but most people don't think, you know, oh, I went and bought this new chair today as <laughs> an achievement, but listen, this is an achievement, okay? By putting the, oh, because you know I only paid $50 and it has a matching ottoman, what? You'll see it all tomorrow or the next day whenever I do the video tour if you want it. Um, anyway, by putting your thoughts in a journal every day, you see how they build up over the days, weeks, months, years. You can start with simple things like five ways you paid a random act of kindness today or three things you did to help further your career. Or like I always say, 10 things you can be grateful for and three things you love about yourself. That's a really good vibrational combination, okay? Uh, it can be something as simple as holding the door open for a little old lady or reading a book about saving for retirement. As you look back on your entries of positive things, it is gonna give you motivation to achieve even more. Number two, list your goals in baby steps. I love baby steps. So instead of setting down a goal to accomplish the whole thing at one time. You know, try breaking it down into baby steps, tiny little steps that you need to meet each day. Each time you can cross off one of your little steps, you gain more confidence in yourself and you're gonna empower yourself to really reach the next step until you've achieved that primary goal. If your goal is to save money for vacation, you know, you can plan little $5 things or throw all your change in at the end of the day. One, one time I did that, I, I just stopped spending change and I started, Anytime they gave me change, I'd throw it in the bottom of my purse. Each week I'd clean out my purse and I would put the change in the coffee can. Well, that was the first year I was a single mom after I went through my divorce. And so I actually took that coffee can up to our local grocery store called Snooks and they had those coin machines where you could dump them in. Yeah, yeah, so here's what I did. <laughs> this is a little tip for you single moms out there. Try this because within I think about three or four months, I had like $170, but at the time I only had one child and. $170 could provide a pretty awesome Christmas for one kid when you're careful and you know how to save money. So that's how I bought his Christmas that year. It was pretty cool. <laughs> See, I could have been sad that I had to save my change to buy my child Christmas that year, but instead I was so excited and I told everybody about it, which I know I'm such a nerd, but I don't really care if people think it's lame that I had to buy my kids Christmas with coins that year. That it was a great Christmas for him and it was a great Christmas for me because I did it by myself. I was strong enough to do it. So yay for me. <laughs> Anyway, it's self-love Sunday. Okay, point is, you're gonna feel really good knowing you've done seven things for yourself in one week rather than waiting until you suddenly have $1,000 falling into your lap all of a sudden, because you know how often that happens, right? Right. <laughs> Plus, if you fail to achieve big goals, it really diminishes the self-confidence that you have. But even if it's a little bit, it's gonna take, take it right away from you. So small goals, and baby steps can help you to gain the self-esteem you're lacking. Number three, and this is my final one for today, read inspirational quotes, do daily affirmations, and watch your favorite YouTuber or several of your favorite YouTubers each day. People who make you feel inspired, people who make you feel like, yes, okay? Check out queenbee.com, get a book with lots of inspirational self-quotes or self-esteem, you can check out all of my books at booksangiewrote.com. You know, read something that, or, or watch something every day that makes you feel, oh, that's good, I like that, that's good, I like the way that feels. <laughs> hey, you can even add it to your daily journal entry. If today's inspirational quote, you know, talks about greeting everyone you meet, 
that day instead of avoiding eye contact, which sometimes we start doing after we've been with the narcissist for a while because sometimes they get mad at us if we make eye contact with other people. Yeah, <laughs> try it. Try it that day. In fact, today, I know I'm a little late. I apologize for that. It's kind of like self-love Sunday prime time instead of morning. I'm sorry. But tell me, do you like prime time better or you prefer the morning? Because if you prefer the morning, I'll try to get back to it next week. It was just crazy with all the office things today. Anyway, but I'm very excited. I can't wait to show it to you guys. Okay, at the end of the day, you can journal anything as one more positive thing that you accomplished. I'll be journaling that I accomplished this office today and hopefully that I didn't lose too many of y'all over being late for myself the Sunday thing. So accepting yourself is the first step to building self-esteem. It's not possible to feel positive about yourself if you can't accept yourself. Self-acceptance is the level of happiness that and satisfaction that you have with yourself. Many mental health professionals believe that self-acceptance is necessary before any change can happen, okay? If you're feeling stuck, a lack of self-acceptance might be the first challenge to overcome. Accepting your flaws allows you to change them, my friend. Learn to accept yourself and enjoy the person you are. You got this, okay? Let go of critical stuff in the back of your head. Overly critical parents don't have bad children. They're just lousy parents, okay? There's just you have to let go of those things that if your parents put bad things in your head, let those things go. There's little to be gained by focusing on it. Forgive them as much as you can and move forward. Don't judge yourself based on your parents and what they thought about you or think about you, unless it's good. <laughs> it's really a reflection of them, not you. Number two, volunteer if you can. No easier way to convince yourself that you're worthy of self-acceptance than to volunteer your time with someone who needs you. Prove yourself to yourself, not a bad thing. Number three, be proud of your strengths. It's hard to accept yourself if you're constantly reminding yourself of your weaknesses. Make a long list that you can return to in the future and keep adding to it every single day. Even the smallest pos you know, positive is a good thing, okay? You know, I'm a good person, I have good friends, blah, blah, blah. Number four, forgive yourself. If you're constantly focused on all the things you did wrong in the past, guess what? Life's going to suck. Chalk up those bad experiences to experience. <laughs> Chalk them up. Bad choices, it's in the past. You can't change it. Don't dwell on it. Don't beat yourself up about it. Everybody makes bad choices sometimes, okay? Everybody makes bad choices. Chalk those bad choices up to experience and move on. Everybody does the best they can. There's always going to be a time when you're less capable than someone else. So what? You can do better next time. Like... I'm not good at all the things. Everybody has things they suck at. I suck at some things too. That's why Melina's coming over to help me put the organizational touches on my office tomorrow. I suck at that stuff. But you know, whatever. Number five, and my final point for the day, let go of the goals that you can't reach. You know, you're not gonna become an astronaut if you're 65 years old, okay? You're going to have to do something different. So maybe you wanna be a space expert. Or, you know, maybe you want to like talk about how you could have been an astronaut on YouTube. I don't know. The point is there's a time to let it go and there's a time to change direction. And so if there's something, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you're trying to fix a broken relationship and you're sitting here watching this video, identifying with my videos or any other person who talks about narcissistic abuse, maybe that time is now. Maybe your, your goal that you want to change isn't your personal one as much as it is your let me say that again, not your professional one, more so your personal one. Don't, don't think I'm locking you into professional stuff here. What I'm saying is your goal should be ultimately to be happy. It is Self Love Sunday. You gotta love yourself today, at least. Let this moment be the moment you decide to make some plans that are good for you and plausible for you and plans that excite you. Keep the negative self-talk out of it and be authentic. Be who you really are and be okay with it. Don't apologize for who you are anymore. Living honestly is scary, my friend, but oh, it's easy and it's beautiful. People really do admire and respect people who can be real. Recognize it. Recognize you're worthy and recognize that everybody deserves forgiveness and that includes you, my friend. Forgive yourself. Self-acceptance, <laughs> fancy word for tolerating yourself. Bottom line, nobody's perfect. You accept your friends and your family and even though they're all flawed, right? You need to give yourself a break. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, 
okay? Focus on the positive traits and forgive yourself for your flaws and your mistakes. Accept yourself as you are. Now, it is time for the self-love Sunday. Question of the day. Question of the day is, have you struggled with your self-esteem or your self-image during or after narcissistic abuse? How did you manage? What would you tell a friend who is dealing with the same situation? Share your thoughts and your experiences in the comments below and let's discuss it. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me for a primetime Self Love Sunday and I will see you tomorrow morning for my usual daily video. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And as always, thanks for letting me be a part of your day and a part of your life. And hey, thanks for being a part of mine. It really does mean a lot to me. See you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.